Well, another year is done and in the books. I've had a lot of good whiskey. Hope you guys have too. So now it's time to look forward to 2024 and what whiskey that we're going to get into this year. So I've got a wish list, a plan, if you will, of whiskeys that I want to get into that are coming out this year or whiskeys that I haven't gotten to yet that I want to get to that I didn't get into 2023. I'm going to list whiskeys that are coming out this year that I'm going to make every attempt to get. I might not be able to find them, but I'm going to try my hardest. And then some things on this list I'm going to list just because it's a wish list. So you don't always get your wishes. So when I put some things on there that are just really cool that I may get my hands on, but most likely won't. Also, a couple of trips that I think would be cool to try and do this year or just in general. Again, it's a wish list. So without further ado, here is my 2024 whiskey wish list. First whiskey, Lefroy Karchis, yearly release by Lefroy, usually no age statement, but this year in 2024, it's going to be a 10 year age statement, matured in ex bourbon and finished in Pedro Jimenez Sherry. Sounds awesome to me. Now, the prices of Karchis are usually around 100 to 120 bucks. I could be wrong. I will put an edit in the video for you if I am wrong, but they're also kind of hard to find. They're limited release. They're just based on every year. I've only ever had the 2020 release, and I think the Scotch Father shared his 2021 release with me. Don't remember. They're awesome. They're really good. There's some things that are pretty sought after from, from Lefroy, and with this one being a 10 year age statement, it's probably going to make the market even more crazy to try and find. So I'm going to make every attempt to find this carcass, but in general, if you can get your hands on a carcass, it's going to be pretty good. This is my first whiskey on my wish list. my second whiskey. I am very excited about this one. This is Long Row Red. Long Row, as you know, is the peated Campbelltown from Springbank. The red is the red wine barrels that they always finish these whiskeys in per year. Now, they didn't have one this year. Instead, they put a 21 year 2023 release out. So this one didn't have one. But the last three years, in 2020, they used a Chilean Cabernet, a 13 year age statement. 2021, they used a Pinot Noir 14 year age statement, and 2022 was a Tawny Port Wine 11 year age statement. And Long Row Red is always cast strength. These things are usually bangers. I've only ever got my hands on a Long Row Peated. Springbank distilleries are very hard to get your hands on from their bottles, but I'm going to make every effort this year to try and find one, call people. Scotch Father on the lookout. He's always tied into a bunch of people that own, you know, stores. So if you can get your hands on a Long Row Red, seriously, they're so unique. They're peated Campbelltown and they're always in red wine. Some red wine is sweet, some red wine is dry, some red wine is spicy, some red wine is super fruity. So you're getting something different every year and they're always cast strength. None of it's diluted and get that full flavor. I am super excited about the Long Row Red 2024 release. That's number two. My third whiskey, probably the one I'm most excited about because you guys know I love Octomore. Well, Octomore 15.3 is coming out this year and it is the second highest peat level they've ever done. Octomore 8.3 was PPM 309. This one in 15.3 is 307, so it's pretty close and I cannot wait to get my hands on this. It's going to be 61% alcohol in ex bourbon and oloroso. So just get that sweetness and spice to cut through a bit of that peat. Always five year age statements unless stated otherwise with Octomore. And man, it's gonna be a little hefty price. It's probably gonna be around $300, but I only have ever gotten the point ones of these releases and I'm kind of sick of that. They're not bad. The point two is always in a wine barrel of some sort and the point three is always better. It's a subjective thing to say, I know, but when the Scotch Father brought up it was point three and I had the point three and the point one, I was like, the point three is just better. So. This one is going to be a hefty price. Again, hard to find, limited release, but that peat level at 307 and just the Oloroso matured, I just cannot wait for that. So there's number three, Octomore 15.3. Now number four is from Edger Dower, one of my favorite distilleries, as you guys saw in the video up here. But this one isn't coming out this year, but it's Cask 2024. I figured, why not? It's an 18 year age statement matured exclusively in Oloroso Sherry, cast strength at 56% alcohol. There's only 333 bottles though, so it's going to be a hefty price most likely. Probably around 200, 220 bucks if I had to guess, and I might have to go to a whiskey auction site, but 18 year in Oloroso with Edger Dower, I mean the picture of the bottle, it looks like freaking maple syrup. It looks thick, it looks dark. Everything I love in Edger Dower, so I'm gonna go try and find that. I think I saw some reviews online and all the notes people were putting out were just everything that I love. You know, the sweetness, the syrupiness, it's viscous, it's chewy. 
just a long lasting finish. Edger Dower is an amazing, amazing distillery and you guys know I talk highly about them all the time. They are the little gem of Scotland. So I'm gonna try and find the Edger Dower Castum 2024. Whiskey five, my wish list, Port Charlotte 18, 54% alcohol, 40 PPMs, don't know the price. People are suggesting it's probably gonna be around 350 to 400 bucks because the 12 in the US has been around 200 bucks. I know the 10 Port Charlotte I got was like 70, but it's gonna be limited. I think only 6,000 bottles is gonna come out. So Brook Lottie is a premium product, probably gonna be a little more expensive. I think this one is inviting a 50% Brook Lottie, 40% Port Charlotte, and 10% Octomore. So, I'm excited about this. Now, the, only the front label was found in the TTB, so I don't really know what the maturation or finish barrel is gonna be, but regardless, an 18-year Port Charlotte, it's gotta be super good, and if that's in there, you know it's gonna be pretty good. So that's my fifth wishlist whiskey. Now, this section is the out of reach section, the whiskeys or things that I want this year that I most likely won't be able to get just because hard to find or super expensive. So, headlining this is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Now. I live in Maryland. My Costco's here do not sell liquor, so I won't get those sweet MSRP prices. I'm most likely gonna have to pay secondary market prices, which are absurd, and I will not pay for those. But I just think it would be cool for me to see one of those on a shelf. I've been talking to some shop owners, so I'm already like networking myself there. But the shops in my area don't actually sell enough of the cheap liquor to even qualify for those allocation lotteries. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find one. And that's fine. I know that they're good but I know that they're super heavily sought after and that bourbon market over there is just insane to me. I'd rather stick to my scotch where I know the market and it's not absurd quite yet. It is for spring bank, but it'd be cool to find one. And if I can drive up to Delaware to a Costco and maybe find one, that would be cool because I think they usually are under MSRP, but they're not the secondary market prices. So Buffalo Trace Antique Collection would be awesome, but probably out of reach, but that's number one. My second out of reach whiskey, 2024 release of Hazelburn 15. The 2023 release was 55% alcohol, 100% Oloroso. It just looks like candied syrup coffee. It is so dark. It just looks like I just want to chug that entire bottle. And you guys know how much I love the Hazelburn 15 of when I had this year at Jack Rose. It is fantastic. But as we all know, anything from Springbank is super hard to find. So I'm going to make a really hard effort to find one of these. But again, I think with this, there's only 9,000 bottles. It's a little more than the Port Charlotte 18 coming out, but again, I can't order online directly from Springbank. It would most likely have to be an auction site or get super lucky. Maybe the Scotch Father has his connections. I can talk to him. He can maybe find one because you're awesome, dude. But Hazelburn 15, 2024 release, number two. Third out of reach whiskey. I was talking to Scotch Father and he said there was going to be a 2024 release of Lafoy 27. Now, this is some brief Googling, and I think current 27 year releases are not that much more expensive than the Lafoy 25 up behind me. And that one was $650. So if that's sub 1K, maybe I'll do one tax return whiskey and get that one, but I don't wanna have two 25, 27 year Lafroigs on my shelf. I can get something else that's really cool, but man, something about an old Lafroig is just really, really nice. It's creamy, it's soft, but the older you get, you sometimes get lower ABVs, and I don't wanna have like a watered down experience. That 51% 25 year was like just the lower end of what I like out of an ABV. I don't like the sub 50% usually, unless it's got some peat behind it. But those that peat in those 27, 25 years gets really mellow, so it doesn't hang around as long with these Lafroy molds. But regardless, if I can find a 27 year 2024 release, maybe I'll get it, but most likely out of reach, that's number three. So this section is trips I could take this year. One of them most likely not out of three. So the first trip I could potentially take this year, trip to Kentucky. Go see Old Forester, Elijah Craig, Buffalo Trace, you know, the classics. And personally, you guys know, I really love Old Forester. So going there would be awesome. I've already been to Nashville. I've been to Bell Mead. Tennessee whiskey is kind of meh for me. But when you go to a distillery tour and some of these like really iconic ones, they pump you full of whiskey. And with Kentucky, I could ship whiskey back to me. And you know they got some allocations down there and that they have really, really good stuff that you cannot find up here because the poor market is crazy. So I think it's not quite out of reach, but as a father of two and a full-time employee, it might be hard to schedule that trip, but I think that would be really cool to do. So Scotch Father, if you're watching, I'm gonna go to Kentucky maybe. Trip that most likely will not happen will be a trip to Scotland, but man, I wanna go so bad. I wanna go to Isla. I wanna hit all those distilleries. Ardbeg, Brooklady, Lafroy, Lagavulin, Bowmore, those ones. I mean, it's gotta be amazing. And 
go over to Highland, get my little guy Edger Dower. Uh, right now they're closed, they're, they're low staff, so maybe I'll wait till they're open so I can make that trip a reality because this year will not happen. International travel will not happen right now. It's a big plan I gotta make, but going to Scotland would be freaking awesome. But I do think Scotch Father is going this year. The third thing that I can do this year that is absolutely super easy is go to Jack Rose. If you don't know what Jack Rose is, Jack Rose Dining and Saloon in DC. The biggest and best whiskey collection on the Eastern Seaboard. They have 2,600 bottles of whiskey on the wall and it is just a fantastic experience. The lighting sucks for videos, you guys saw that video, but the whiskey's great and the food is fantastic. The atmosphere is awesome. They only let you sit at a table for around two hours, but I was there, I had Brooklotti, fifth edition, 135 bucks for a one ounce pour, but there is some amazing selection there. You're not gonna find anywhere else. They get their hands on amazing stuff. So I can definitely do that this year. I most likely will. You guys will definitely see a video about that. But there is my 2024 whiskey wish list. Let me know what you guys' wish list is for this year. You know, it's gonna buy some cool bottles, try a new region, try a different type of whiskey, or go somewhere. Let me comment down below. I would love to see what you guys wanna do this year, and maybe what you guys suggest might make me wanna do something cool like that. So, like this video, give a like, let's subscribe to it, consider doing so, and we'll see you guys next time.